the bunker busting how it's a bomb that ended desert storm i absolutely love the fat electrician videos yeah looking forward to jumping to this before we do a lot of you guys are not subscribed to the channel if you guys don't mind in hitting that subscribe button it'll really help me out really help out the channel but yeah let's jump into this and check this out man today we're talking about that time that american mayor may not have prematurely ended the Gulf War by creating a new type of bunker buster bomb known as the GBU-28, which is literally the barrel of a howitzer that they filled full of explosives and dropped on the enemy. Nice. Yeah, Uncle Sam ran out of ammo and threw the entire gun at the enemy. <laughs> Bro, of course it did, man. Every single one of these videos that we watch, it always seems like it goes down like this. All right, buckle up. This is going to be a history lesson in half. Right, I'm ready. Once upon a time on August 2nd, 1990, Iraq decides to invade Kuwait. Why would Iraq want to do this? Well, Iraq just got done having an eight-year-long war with Iran, and Kuwait helped fund it. If so, right. facto, uh, Iraq owes Kuwait billions and billions of dollars. Uh, Rather than pay all that money back, Iraq's penis potato, I mean cockstarch, I mean <laughs> dictator, Iraq's dictator, Saddam Hussein, figures, rather than pay back all that money, I'm just going to invade Kuwait with my enormous army that's the fourth largest army on the planet at this point in time. Oh, wait, is that actually the fourth... Oh, wow. Take over Kuwait, and then I won't owe anybody any money. It's not ethical, but it does make sense. And then right. pretty much nothing happened for like three months. But then in November of 1990, Saddam Hussein would do what dictators do best and get a little too greedy. You see, he figured now that he was in uh -huh. control of Iraq and Kuwait, it was a significant portion of the world's oil supply, so he could actually slow down oil production, which would jack up global fuel prices, uh -oh. and he would literally make more money for doing less work. And while that was economically sound, it would turn out to be right. a tactical fucking error because as soon as gas prices went up, the entire planet looked at Saddam Hussein. Of like, course! So you have chosen death. <laughs> the UN Security Council would then hold another meeting where they would decide to tell Saddam Hussein, you have until January 15th, 1991 to be out of Kuwait or you will be forcibly removed. Fast forward wow. to January 15th. He is elected to not leave Kuwait. Game on, teams are now set. We have Iraq versus America and a team of fucking literally everyone else fast forward again like 48 hours no, listen i'm still innocent i can't laugh that much because it actually hurts january 17th 2 30 <coughs> american and coalition forces will begin their air campaign against iraq and there will be over 1,000 aircrafts involved everything from b-52s to apache attack helicopters it's going to be a warheads on foreheads extravaganza and just for context on how dangerous this mission is actually going to be because i feel like most people don't know or get don't crazy. understand how powerful the iraqi military military actually was at this point in time right they were the fourth largest military on the planet and they were see i actually didn't realize this either they was the fourth largest what the most heavily fortified nation on earth as ah. far as air defense goes iraq had 154 surface to air missile sites servicing 16,000 missiles 972 anti-aircraft artillery platforms, okay 2400 anti-aircraft guns what is that what is it is that not broken? 6,000 mobile anti-aircraft guns, 478 early warning radar arrays, and 558 combat aircraft on standby. Yo, listen, I did... Th this was only... What, this is 1991-ish? Bro, I did not realize they was this powerful. Wow. All ready to get in a fight. That being said, fast forward again, two and a half hours, January 17th, 5 a.m. American and coalition forces have complete air superiority over Iraq and have dismantled all of that shit. And this of is course. where the main problem arises. Have. With complete air superiority, there's a good chance that they can actually make Iraq surrender without U.S. and coalition ground forces having to go into Iraq. But the problem right. is the majority of the Iraqi senior leadership, as well as pretty much their entire command and control infrastructure, is located inside of bunkers right outside of Baghdad and these bunkers are 30 to 50 feet underground and the walls are made out of four feet thick reinforced concrete Yo. there's no bomb or weapon that America has that they can use from a plane to take out these bunkers so yeah that's protection at the finest that is protect yeah so America's gonna do the last thing you ever want America to do they're gonna improvise I mean the obvious solution is just to make a bigger better bunker buster bomb but the problem <laughs> with that is they don't have any infrastructure to make a bigger bomb and they're not gonna be able to build that infrastructure and build the bomb in the amount of time it's gonna take before right. American ground troops invade Iraq because once they do they're gonna be in a hurry because they're under the command of four-star army general Stormin Norman Schwarzkopf aka the bear a man whose life the motto bear. was when placed in command and take charge and he does not think highly of his adversary when asked what he thought about saddam hussein he said and i quote you know what no he'll say it as far as saddam hussein being a great military strategist he is neither a strategist nor is he 
schooled in the operational arts, nor is he a tactician, nor is he a general, nor is he as a soldier. Other uh? than that, he's a great military man. I want you to know that. <laughs> so they have to make this bomb in a hurry if they want to... Aye, that's the bear right there, man. That's the American bear. ...and ground forces from going into Iraq. That's when somebody has the brilliant idea of using a howitzer barrel as the bomb's hull. I mean, it should work. It's a long, heavy piece of metal that's already heat-treated, so it should penetrate concrete. And then... Wait, as the what? What, is there a plan to, like, shoot the actual... Huh? ...from going into Iraq. That's when somebody has the brilliant idea of using a howitzer barrel as the bomb's hull. The bomb's hull. So they're gonna use this whole barrel to go with it? Ah, we'll see. I mean, it should work. It's a long, heavy piece of metal that's already heat treated, so it should penetrate concrete. And right. that's the idea they roll with. The Air Force gets a hold of the U.S. Army. The U.S. Army sends over four 8-inch decommissioned M110 howitzer barrels to Water Valite Arsenal in New York. Water Valite Arsenal, being one of the most elite gun barrel manufacturers on the planet, gets uh. to work immediately. They start milling and machining these barrels down to size so that they can fit pre-existing bomb components like nose cones and fins and so on. And Water Valite Arsenal tells the U.S. Air force they can have four of these bombs done in a week which i wow. cannot stress to you enough is absolutely insane to be able to machine four gun barrels that are 19 feet long and weigh 4500 pounds in each a week and are already heat treated is incredible america if you don't know about heat treating when you heat treat metal it becomes significantly harder and that's actually right. why they needed the howitzer barrels but it also makes it virtually impossible to machine i mean not impossible but significantly harder to machine think about like uh. trying to spread butter on toast versus trying to spread frozen butter on toast that's about the <laughs> difference there so they get the first bomb done but then they nice. run into a problem because they've never worked with a bomb this big they don't have any way to actually stand it up straight and be able to fill it with explosive oh, so no if you way. can't pick a bomb up what do you do you beat the earth down they take it outside dig a hole stick the bomb in the hole standing up so that they can fill this thing with explosive they get that done paint it stick it on a c-130 while the paint is still wet and ship it to nevada from there they strap the bomb to an f-111 the same plane they plan on dropping it from in combat and do right. a test run this bomb penetrates the desert floor by over a hundred feet okay if you're not american that's like the world's biggest blue whale all the way into the <laughs> ground this bomb went so deep that they didn't even have time to recover it they're like fuck it we don't have time storm and norman's coming we gotta go just <laughs> then back at water hey listen hey if you guys want to find like the shelly tonight it's probably still there go and have a look Fleet arsenal they finished the second bomb this time they fill it with concrete because they want to do a rocket sled test in aglin air base in florida so they get this thing done fill it with concrete put it on a c-130 while the paint's still wet ship it to florida from there they strap it to a rocket sled and yeet it at 22 solid feet of reinforced concrete wow just to see how far it will penetrate not only did this bomb penetrate all 22 feet feet of concrete but it then proceeded to go an extra half a mile this video should have been my, my fucking valentine's day special with how much penetration is in it it's incredible <laughs> so then back at water valet arsenal they finish the last two actual bombs that are going to be dropped in combat put them on a c-130 again and ship them across the planet to iraq now bear Crazy. in mind all of this has happened in like a matter of three weeks they have gone from retired howitzer barrels to new bombs to testing them in Nevada, to testing them in Florida, to having them in an active combat zone. In a matter of weeks, man. That's why you just don't mess with America. In three weeks. Which Mad. Is the biggest logistical flex I may have ever heard of. Nothing stokes human creativity greater than the desire to kill somebody that you don't like. I'm not saying <laughs> it's right, but God damn it, it's the truth. Now, February 27th, these bombs are strapped to two F-111 aardvarks, and they are sent into combat to engage these bunkers. The first F-111 lines up his shot, and he fucking misses. Of course. <laughs> Great. But the second F-111 drains a three-pointer and gets a direct hit. Ooh. Smoke immediately starts rolling out of the vents for this bunker, and it is completely obliterated. And the very next day, Saddam Hussein would sign a ceasefire and agree to leave Kuwait. Now, did he- Bro, wait, wait, wait. So, wait, it wasn't his bunker? But he heard the news, he was like, nah, 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 nah. If they got a bomb that can destroy bunkers and no one's safe, I'm gonna sign it. Hey, hey, smart. The very next day, Saddam Hussein would sign a ceasefire and of agree he did. to leave Kuwait. Now, did he do that because of this bunker buster bomb? That part is actually impossible to say because despite the fact they got this bomb done, 
and dropped in only three weeks, they still were unable to get it done quick enough before US and coalition ground forces would invade Iraq. And in the four days that those ground forces were in Iraq, they completely decimated the Iraqi army and wow. parts of that army were already starting to surrender to them. So whether the reason that Saddam Hussein decided to surrender was because his army was defeated or because he finally found out that he couldn't hide inside of his bunker anymore <laughs> safe while he sent men out to die, is hard to say but re but for this story we're gonna go with the reason for the bunk reason he's not a safe you know you know what i mean it makes sense for this story bro regardless in conclusion the overall moral of this story is whatever you do try not to raise gas prices thanks for watching best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at fatelectrician.com quack bang out i love this guy's videos man honestly his videos are 10 out of 10 make sure you guys do show him love his link is in the description hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you have a thumbs up subscribe for more content i'm live every single with down twitch.tv forward slash l3wg if you guys want to check me out over there i'll see you on the next one peace